I'm sure they can hear me yet. <laughs> So this is, you know, um, a delay. So the actual thing now. Hey guys, it's me, David. I'm here in Dillman's and we are going to be doing a demonstration of a fisherman. I figured it was so perfectly matched here in Dillman's and there's a lot of fishermen out there. And today's beer is given to me from Cindy, one of the students in my class from Minnesota. And this is the Lift Bridge Brewery Company, half-assed 93X, <laughs> 93X IPA. And so we're gonna give it a taste. And so we'll see what we can do here. Oh, ow. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, I must have shaken that a little bit too much. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that's pretty good. Give it another taste. I'm going to give that a 9.5 paintbrush <laughs> out of 11. Out of 11 paintbrush, that's a 9.5. So very good. Actually, very good. Liftbridge half ask 93X IPA. Get some. It's really good. <laughs> so, all right. So um, let's go to our, let's go right away to our, um, here's our website. Um, if you want to see what we're doing and painting every week for anybody new here, I think there's going to be a bunch of people new. Um, I've been talking to, a bunch of people last week when I was out plein air painting um, at the expo in Grand Marais. And this week at Dillman's, I had a lot of new people, I think are gonna be helping you showing up. I do have a crowd here, an audience, <laughs> and they are gonna be watching me live. And so they're gonna be asked questions. So if you hear somebody ask a question, it will be them. And I see that Tina's here, Sue, Pamela, Lyle, Pat, thanks for stopping by. Let's see how many people we have here. They wanna know. So, so far 18 people. So thanks guys for stopping by. And we're gonna be doing this fisherman here you see on my website. And again, on my website is everything, all the products and stuff right down here is the new recommended products page. So if I recommend a product, it's there um, with links to the places. And also if you're shopping on Amazon, please click this link right here. There's a link right there. See that shop Amazon, click here. That helps me out a little bit. And they send me a little bit of money, or actually I just use it as a credit for Amazon because I also purchase everything on Amazon. So that's all cool. Let's go to our materials. Today we're using these colors, these whole bank colors and no masking fluid, no transfer paper. I sat here a little bit before and sketched this up. I'm using Stonehenge Aqua, Stonehenge Aqua paper. And there's my brushes. And you, again, you can get my brushes on my website. And so here is our value study. All right, so, um, so this is a, a little difficult, and I know that he's right in the center of the picture, but I think it's way to the left of the, with this big tree right here, with the tree, let me point to it. So this being that this tree is right here and he's in the center, he probably should be over a little bit, but because of the, all these darks on this side, I think it works okay. It's it's not bad. When you weigh the painting over one side, then I'm thinking, okay, what happens with this side? Because this side is kind of, he's looking off page, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the, his fishing rod going over this way and it'll go into a dark. So it'd be kind of like he's looking this way, but these waves will bring me back into the picture, I hope. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and if you're looking at the colors, I had a little problem with what I was I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with these greens back here. And with the greens, I'm gonna maybe push them back a little bit. I do want to kind of dark over here, but I think on the front part over here, we're gonna make it a little bit warmer. Like, um, I know there's pine trees right back here, but down, down here, I may change the colors a little bit. And actually up here in, at Manaqua and um, Lac du Flambeau here in Dillman's, they're just changing. And so if you're here this weekend, it's almost peak. I think next week will be solely, totally peak. So that's my um, autumn report. So if you're up here um, next week, you're gonna you'll be going through peak colors because it's really right, really nice right now. And they have all the colors out there. That's the reason I did this piece too, because the colors are so beautiful up here right now. All right, so let's start painting here, guys. And again, ask questions, and I will look up there and see if you guys are paying attention. And <laughs> and ask questions, please ask questions. Here, let me just this looks out of focus. And if if there's a problem of me you hearing me or something, please let me know because this is at Dillman's, and I'm not sure how everything is. And it seems kind of like 
out of focus. Is it good? In? There we go. Okay. So we're going to start with whatever we always start with, right? So everybody knows what we start with and paper towel. Let me get a paper towel real quick. <laughs> I do have a, a towel underneath my thing, like my, like my regular in studio area. Hey, Linda from Tennessee and Don from Colorado. So let's, um, oh, I wanted, I wanted to show you something. <laughs> so tonight I'm using 140 pound paper, which I normally don't ever use. I usually use 300 pound, but I wanted to show you guys because in class this week, what we did is we used 140. And I know a lot of people will tape down their paper. Um, don't tape down 140. Don't tape it down. What you want to do is take your, your mister and spray the back, spray the back. Don't tape it because once you put tape on there, it stretches, the paper stretches. So all I do is I wet the surface right here. I wet the board. And again, this is 140 pound Stonehenge Aqua. I'm gonna wet the back. Can't see that because I wanna wet the computer or anything. So I'm just doing this back here. I actually can see me right there, see? I'm wetting it. <laughs> so I'm just wetting it really well. And I'm gonna not tape it down. I'm just gonna apply it to the board, the plastic signboard. And um, you don't have to wet the front if you're not doing big areas, but it'll just lay flat and it's nice um, thin paper, but now it will not buckle. It will not buckle on you. You're using 140 and it'll all be good. I've never done that for you guys. And I just was thinking to myself, oh, why don't I show you guys that? Because if you want to buy lesser expensive paper, because I know, you know I like 300 pounds, but this works just as well. Now I will just do spray the front because I want to do wet into wet. I want to get all my lights, which is what I always do, right? So I'm just going to spray the front. I'm going to keep on spraying. See how nice it sprays. And then I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to kind of spread it out. And this way, then I get a nice um, even wash. But don't start working when you do is just spraying it because you really need to take it because it puts a little dots of water all around because the mister. But this kind of lets it soak in a little bit. And I'm doing my lights to dark. And like always, step one is light. You guys know that. And for anybody who's new here, that is a first step. <laughs> you do your lights. And if anybody's new here, thank you for um, coming to my Thursday night paint along. And so what am I going to paint first? My lights. And what are my lights? The, all the, the sky is light. Now the sky is kind of white, and so I'm going to keep it white. But I'm going to take a little bit of light blue little bit of ultramarine blue and horizon blue. And look at how clean my palette is. Everybody knows I do a really nice clean palette. So I'm gonna go in here and do parts of this with a little bit of blue. Now I'm not going over everything because I want the, um, the orange and yellow to be over here. I don't want that to be green. So I'm just kind of doing around my, my um, little bit of blue back up here and it's gonna to go to light. And so the sun basically is almost right around this area. I'm gonna make it really light there. But over here, I'm going to add a little bit of blue and maybe on this side too. Oh, that's a leaf. You don't have to do the leaf. We're going to put a little bit of blue over here. And it's my light, light sky. Now, being that it's up in the sky, it also is in the water. So let's put it right in the water right away. And I do a little bit of waves. I'm not going to make the water quite as dark as in the photo that you see there. I'm going to take it a little bit lighter than that. Just gonna go in here, get my little waves. It's gonna be a light part of my, that's reflecting the sky color, right? And so now we're gonna go in here and do our leaves. This I'm gonna just keep white and maybe a little bit of, um, cause the sky sometimes is so bright right where that person is that we're gonna just keep that as a really light light. Cause if the sun's right there and we got this yellow, we're not gonna put a little, maybe a little bit of blue, just put a little bit, just a little bit there. Because it's, it's so bright that it's making everything light and white. We don't want that. Now we're going to take the yellow, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange. And we're going to get the lightest tree color or the leaf color. Put a little white in that yellow because the yellow seems to be very um, bright. Now, I did, this is not permanent yellow light like on the list. This is Aurelian, Aurelian. And so I'm using that with a little bit of white. And that makes it a little bit of chalky yellow. And I like that a little bit better than super bright white yellow i mean super bright yellow and it just gives me a little bit more of a a pastel kind of yellow 
Again, if you have questions, please ask, and I'll look up every once in a while to see if you have any questions to be answered. And so I, these are all soft edges now, too. Remember, I'm doing soft edges first, and I will do my hard edges, and I'll, I'll leave that for when it's dry. Hopefully it will dry, but I do have a, I brought my hair dryer in here just in case. So I'm just going to kind of come in here, getting my light yellows, make it really light. audience here is very, very quiet. <laughs> they aren't saying a thing. I warned them that if every, anything they say, they can pick up, like I can pick up all week. We've been using um, Zoom and the camera, this camera. And in the other room, we could actually pick up, the closed captioning would pick up the words they were saying in the other room. <laughs> so it's very sensitive, my microphone here. And if it's too loud, please let me know, because or if it's breaking or something. I like the pa paper treatment method you use. It's much better than soaking both sides and waiting for everything to dry. Yeah, it's it's fun because you can just let it. Now it's going to stay um, soaked underneath there. You just have to use something plastic or like a plexiglass to let it dry or let it stay wet. So do that. Make sure you just use something that is like airtight so that no water air gets inside there. So here I'm putting all, these are all leaves. These are going to be all leaves, this yellow. And then this is a little bit of orange and yellow and I'll get even brighter orange or more reddish orange. And this will dry pretty quick. It's, um, you know, this paper is just like 300 pound cold press, but it, um, it's flat. It will, it will not buckle. Uh, and I made it really wet. You saw I wet it really a lot. And so I'm going to get a little bit more orangey. And I put a little purple in the orange. That will make it dull it down a little bit. If you want to put purple like in the yellow orange, I'll give it more of a terracotta look. Though I can use light red too for that. But I just, I mean, again, I'm, I'm doing the nervous twitch thing because I'm so, so nervous. And um, and so we're just going to put that twitch in there and then make the little leaves. And by being it wet, the thicker the paint is, the less it's going to run. The less it's going to run around. A little bit of orange in that. And I like doing it while it's wet so that it just gets a nice soft edge. Nice soft edge. You remember that to get your soft edges, you do them, you do them thick, wet into wet. Wet into wet. Wet your paper first. And so while this is still wet, let me get some of the background in here really quickly. I'm going to switch to my round brush, number 16 round brush. And I'm just going to right away go more for a, let's see, I want to go a violety green. Does that make sense? A violety green? I'm not sure. A little bit of cronecrum gold with my violet. And that gives me kind of a violety green. And so I'm just going to put that back there way in a distance, right over the tree, because it doesn't matter. That's going to be darker. He's going to be darker. I could go right over him, but we can stop there a little bit. Yeah, we can go right through him. He's going to have a darker, he's, he's silhouetted almost. A little bit more violet, a little bit more cronecodum gold. Makes a nice, nice, fresh green right into the water. We'll just put it right into the water right away. And see how it looks like it's in the distance because it's soft edge. Now it's running a little bit too fast. So what does that mean? It means that I didn't use enough paint and I had too much water on my brush. What I can do then is just take more pigment and stop up the water by putting it right over the top of it with more pigment. More pigment lets it go less farther, but still be a soft edge, but just won't go as far. And right away, I'll put the little waves in there right into him. Not going to go around him because he is darker. Don't go around items because it, it won't work. It's better to go right through them. Fishing pole. Now this is starting to dry. I'm feeling this dry. So I'm going to mist it a little bit. It's going to take a little mist on there. That's all you need, a little bit, just a little bit to keep it wet. And as I go this way in my value study, it got darker, right? And so let's get a little bit darker, put a little bit of blue in there, a bit of the orange that I had there. I can get a little bit darker, go around these. And why am I making it green? Only because if I make it the yellow like this, then it looks like it's the same level. And so I'm going to push that back, make this come forward. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. But the fish just, just jumped. It does. It's so good. <laughs> No so we have the background sitting back. Maybe let's see what happens if I put a little orange in there. You got to remember to paint through. Paint through things that are going to be darker in front because there's no chance of going around that and making that look really, you know, clean. So it's easier just to take and make my violet -y green. I use lavender, which has white in it, so that's a little bit more pastel like. Or right over his hand. We don't have to go always see his hand. We can make that later. And the white of the sky is reflecting white in the water, so it's going to be white, right? You're not going to do something different just because you think it's different. No, it's going to be the color of the sky, which is white there. And if you look out, it gets white sometimes. It gets really light. It's all about the atmosphere. The atmosphere and how many, how much dust is in the air and I learned that from Carl Bretzky. He, he talks all, I took his workshop when I was up in Grand Marais. And he, it was more evening stuff that he talked about, but it's still pretty cool. All the stuff he talked about the sky and he makes it scientific, you know, very scientific and how the, how the sky is blue, blue and red, and depending on where the sun is compared to where the earth is rotating and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty interesting. So get his, get his, you can get his, um, on his website, Carl Bretzky, you can look up his, he sells, um, a, a video of uh, his little talk. Carl oh, Bretzky. <laughs> um, That's great. Kathleen just asked me, Kathleen's one of the students here that was here this week. And she asked me if it's a football player, Carl Bretzky. It sounds like it, or a hockey player, isn't it? Bretzky, what's his name? <laughs> Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, Bretzky. So now we're getting darker. See how we're getting darker, but we're also getting more colorful over here. I want to make it a little bit more like here's light red. Going to my light red. Make that a little bit more looking like it's... Now these these pine trees back there, they'll be a little bit darker. And but again, I'm still putting in my light. Oh my gosh, you got, got, got a lot of questions here. I got some plastic clipboards from the thrift store and took the clamps off for backing. I tape a piece of metal on the back to use a magnetic easel. Oh, that's cool. cool. All right, so thanks for that. Thanks for that advice, that's cool. Hi, David, congratulations on your poem award. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah, we had a, I won two awards at the, I won actually two poem awards, um, paintings of, ex, Extraordinary measures or something like that, something. <laughs> but I won it at um, two awards up in Grand Marais at the plein air event. And that was fun up there. And if you want to see those paintings, go to my Facebook page and you can see them there or Instagram. You can see the paintings there. A little bit of a little bit of blue and crack them gold, make my green, and so you can make that a little bit darker. And this is all still wet, so that's how come you're seeing it going um being soft edged. I missed it and I'm going to miss it again a little bit because I'm still still working wet and wet. I'm still working my lights. This is still my first wash of my my light colors and um, once I get my light colors all in then I'll be going to my to my middle tones, large middle tones, large darks and so this is still lights in my middle. Well it's kind of my middle tone so I guess your one and two are kind of coming together as one but let's get these um Let's get a little bit of this in there. I had a little bit of this light red over here. So the water is good, the color of what's reflecting above it. And you notice I didn't do it as dark as the as the photo, but once it dries and I do my darks, it will get a little bit darker in here, I think. Now I'm gonna get my foreground here, because that, well, actually that's gotta go back here. And then we're gonna go in our foreground, get our lights in here. and. I always do the light plants first because I have negative paint around them. So let's get some like nice leaves and stuff down here. Go right over the tree. It's gonna be darker. These are gonna be plants. Let's get some nice orange plants and leaves and some greenery down here too. So let's get some thalo or some alizarin quinacridone gold <laughs> and um, some blue. And that makes it brown. Great. Okay, that didn't work that I wanted. 
Let's get more of a green. So let's get some light, light blue. And it still is not good. <laughs> I do want to put some leaf green into my palette. Oh, there's some right here. A little bit. I, I got to put that in my palette because I used leaf green in my plain air palette because my plain air palette is different from this palette. But I've been using leaf green a lot, and I really kind of like that green. Like to make that green with these yellows and that blues, I just can't get the brightness of that, like a really light, light green. This is just going to make a little bit of that in there. Yellow leaves here. There's a little bit of plant and a little bit more detailed up here because that's where he is. Most of my center of interest is this right here, right? And so we're going to keep that as center of interest. A little light blue in there. And I'll just use my, my paper as a palette. You know, instead of mixing it here, just mix it on here. That way it'll stay nice and fresh. Now let's go to our... Um, pretty much got our lights here now. That's, that's pretty much our lights. Now let's go to our big mediums and big darks, and big washes, I mean. So while this is still wet, I'm gonna keep it wet still. See how long I can keep it wet? I can just do a little hit and it still keeps it wet. I can get soft edges. I don't have to keep on um, watching it and making sure that it's really perfectly wet. It's just evenly wet. And now I can go in there and make a really nice dark, dark green. And I'm gonna do Prankham Gold, Prussian Blue. Quinn gold, Prussian blue, and a little bit of orange to dull it down a little bit because it's just a little bit too, too not. I don't want it that green. There's not that green in nature. It's just not that green. Now, if I push my brush upwards, I get this really nice look of a pine tree. I'm pushing my brush upwards in the upward direction using the back bristles. A little bit of orange to dull it down. Prussian blue, Carnacidum gold. A little bit of orange. I need enough pigment so that it stays nice and dark. It's soft edged, but it's not super soft edge because it's not soaked. It's not like really, really wet. So I'm getting enough soft edging, but still, because it is the background and I don't want to have it really, really hard edged. And we had Coco's back here. We have a, we had dogs in the classroom this week and it was really nice. We had Lanka and Coco. And they were super quiet and they're just really nice to have in class. And now he's in, right behind me, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting nice and dark here. And remember in my value study what that was, right? It was dark over here. And so I, I told you I'm going to make this side dark coming down. And then, of course, it's going to be down here, right? Because you're going to have it reflecting into the water. And you can make it soft edge first, and then we can make it hard edge too. And then we can even change the color green a little bit so it's not all the same green, because there's not all the same green out there. There's all the different kinds of shades of green, and you do want to make them look really nicely different so that, um, and not like the fake greens that you get out of a tube. That's how I mix all my greens with Cronecatum Gold, because it's the better way of making greens. You can do the blue green, orange green, most of the greens out, out there are orangey greens. It's amazing how much green you have with orange. And as you're coming down, I'm going to get um, more of a blue green, like very dull and just almost like it goes in a distance. Now this is going to be leaves, so I'm going to negative paint around them. These are actually leaves that are going to be light. And so I'm just going to put that around them. I'm going to use a little bit of purple green. And I always find it funny that I do a purple green. But it's lavender and and a um, cracked gold usually give me a really kind of a neat green. It's kind of an olive green in a way, but lavender is just a good color to use in there. Now let's... Very natural, very natural looking color. Now let's get the shoreline right away. And this is a big area. Again, I'm getting my large mediums. And a little 
get some orange and red in here. Some because there's darks underneath the leaves and there's things where you see really dark over here. And I need to get this dark at this side because the, it's going to direct me back into this area. And let me put these let me put these trees in down here right away in the reflection. Questions? Nope. Okay. dark Prussian blue is gives you a really really nice dark green look at how dark that is and then put a little bit of orange in there dulls it down but look at how nice and dark that gets it almost makes a brown in a way kind of brown and by using gouache this week our class this week was using gouache with watercolor and boy it's amazing how you then start learning how to use enough pigment because most watercolors don't use enough pigment in their, war, in their work. And so if you use the gouache and you make it thick, you start realizing that you really don't use enough watercolor pigment to uh, make soft edges. And it just works really well to make soft edges and to make um, granulation happen in your work. Because if you don't use enough pigment, granules will not granulate. here kind of line them, line them up so you get the right look that's a little bit over here a little bit so and i also can rub out um, i've talked a lot about that lately is that i um don't be afraid to rub out areas or put in thicker like here i'm putting pure orange into that i'm taking that put it in here and later when I do my hard edges, this is still all soft edges because everything's still wet, right? That's what I'm doing wet in the wet. Once you get the hard edges, then, you know, it'll be hard and you'll see it really well. It'll be, you can direct your eye with the hard edge. Right now it's soft, so it doesn't direct it as much. And we don't have our darks in here yet either, so nothing's, nothing's ready yet. Nothing will show to be like their good value study. But that's pretty much done, I think, over there. You guys like that? Is that okay? Okay, we got half an hour left, so we have to hurry up. And so let's go into our dark areas here. So I work from light to dark, and then we got, we had our light. So this is step two, being our large mediums, large darks. And another large dark and medium is the tree, and even this whole background behind all this light. And so let's just get that going really quickly. And I'm going to make that, it looks kind of... I've got to go around these leaves, so that's negative painted, right? So I drew them up enough where I can kind of just fake some darks behind here. And look at that ugly color I just put down. Ooh, that's not good. So let's just go in there and make it a little bit more fun and purple. Purple is always good to go in the background. So let's get some background leaves. I negative painting the leaves, the light leaves, I got a negative paint around. Though I could use gouache then and go around or put them on the dark, and which I could still do. I can still do that, but I like to make it first watercolory, if that's a word, watercolory. And then we make it gouache afterwards. Gouache, that's a word too. I'm not sure. I make up a lot of words. You guys know that. I make up a lot of words. This is like a middle tone, and I'm going around keeping my light that I first put down. Remember, I first put down my lights, and then I paint around them to make the leaves. And I will be putting, like, there's a really bright reds over here. I'll put those in with opera and maybe a little bit of orange and, like, the bright orange. Because that's, opera is really, like, a really bright, bright red pink. And so putting those together really make it. And then also Scarlet Lake. But my Scarlet Lake is really dirty. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. So let's get a little bit of that dirtiness out of there and grab a little bit of a nice, really bright Scarlet Lake. So some of these, especially this. This leaf right here is very, very red, very orangey red. And I'll use a little bit more of that elsewhere. Like these are the leaves that are in front, hard edge. This is already dry, so I can get like these hard edge leaves now. 
And you're probably asking yourself, well, why don't you just do that really dark, dark tree already and get around it? So, but no, that's the last thing you put in there. You put in your darks last. You don't put them in first because that goes over the top of things. So, and then if you negative painting, you can negative paint these reds that I'm just putting in right now. It'd be orangey red. And depending on what kind of leaf it is, I mean, you could spend some time and make it look like a certain kind of leaf. I don't do that, but you can. If you like, if you know what maple leaves look like or, and you want to put that type of leaf in there and spend that much time, you can be my guest and do anything you want. You're the artist, you make it look like you want. Here I'm putting the leaves in now. And then you do the dark. And I didn't do these first because now I want hard edges. So now I'm putting them in with hard edges. And they're coming up forward in front of what I just did before because hard edges come in front of soft edges. It comes forward, right? And so that's part of the peacock. Peacock is the five ways of dimension. And go into my library of videos and you can look up peacock, P-E-C-O-C. And you can find out what peacock, the five ways of dimension is. Look at that. I just plugged one of my videos. So I go in there and go, go look at it. Because it's a little bit too much to talk about in one video here. And this is, again, do the nervous twitch. Do the nervous twitch like you're really nervous. Just put it in there. And it doesn't look right right now either, does it? Because uh, it's like, why is there all these little dots all around? But once you get the branches in there, then all of a sudden it takes shape because then all of a sudden you realize, oh, there's branches and this is the trees and it all works. But you don't, you know, you, your painting will not look good the whole time you're painting it. They always say, let's go through the uglies first. My teacher said that anyways. He always said, you got to go through the uglies and especially with watercolor, you can't have the watercolor looking good the whole time you're painting it. It's just going to, it evolves from the light to the dark. And also this, the, the person, let's put a little bit of this orange in his face since I've got it on my brush and in his hand. Because he's going to be dark, right? And so we'll do him later. But if you do have things like that where you have a little bit of that in your, in your, in your brush already anyways, then just put it down there. I'll put a little bit into his shirt, pants, and I like this really dark, there's um, really dark leaves over here, that light red terracotta look. This is called terracotta, this is called light red, which is really more of a terracotta red. And I'm mixing a little bit of that in there, a little bit of the orange with the opera, orange with opera with a little bit of yellow. from the peanut gallery <laughs> no questions from you guys okay come on you can ask me questions too you're saying quinn gold and that's is that going to be continued to be manufactured yeah somebody asked me that this week um i have to ask my i have to ask holbein but it must be because i keep on getting it um i can get it from holbein so i think so I'll ask them though, because I got that question like three times this week. And so I'll find out if Cronecrum Gold is still going to be made. Hey, Maura, better late than never. Yes. Thanks for stopping by. And let's keep on going here. Let's see what else, what else I got. I have some little darks over here. I do like these little darks, really dark darks on the edges. It's fun how it all comes together then. And now look at this big dark area over here. So let's get some really nice darks over here. With negative paint around some of these uh, red and green. And now watch how now I'm getting into my dark, larger darks, and how all of a sudden it just appears. Everything just starts coming together. That's always the fun. It's like I know it's you always want to get in a hurry and get that in there. But just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Be patient. Yeah, be patient if you're a watercolorist. 
But now with a tree, I like to use not a round brush. I like to use a flat brush because it's kind of like um, the shape of a tree, right? If you go straight down. And so I'm just going to take a really dark purpley brown violety tree. It's a lot of purple, a lot of brown. So orange and violet make a nice dark. I'll put a little blue uh, green in there too because it's going to reflect it. But now watch this. I'm just going to kind of, this is still wet some of the leaves, but that's okay because I'm using a lot, a lot of paint. I'll put some orange in there. Hard edges. I want hard edges in the side. Going around the leaves. And then I'm going to put a little bit of lavender in there, throw it in there. Because you know me, I like to put the water down and just let things float. Let the colors float in there. And here's a branch that comes up this way. Let's get a little bit darker with a little bit more purple. Purple and orange make a great brown. If you ever need a great brown, you notice I don't have like burnt sienna or any of those color browns in my palette. Though I do have imidazolone brown right here, but that's kind of a purpley brown. And um, so you want to put a little bit of orange in that. Right, so it's getting a little darker, a little bit darker, a little bit of black. I put a little black in there to dull down things too. I'm not against black. Everybody knows that. I'm not a. I don't mind having white or black in my watercolor palette, and I know it's not traditional to use white or black, but I'm using it. Andrew, um, Andrew Wyatt used black, and if he can use it, I can use it. And also, so John Singer Sargent used white. A lot of white in his paintings. I saw one painting. I couldn't believe how much white he used. So if John Singer Sargent and Andrew White could use those colors, I'm going to use those colors. <laughs> At least that's, you know, my, my teacher is rolling in his grave right now, but, but I love using black and white. All right. So I'm heading back here. And then also don't make the lines all the way across because every once in a while you're going to get a, you can get a leaf in front and so you can just start it up again, put a leaf. Though you can also make it opaque and put the leaf in front of it too. And let's use a small round brush to make it a little bit more rounded. Oh, let's keep on going down here. Sorry about that. Let's go there first. Biggest areas first. Don't do details until you get the big stuff done. It's always good to get the big stuff going first. Now, since the light is hitting this side of the tree, I'm going to make that a little bit lighter. I'm going to wet it first. I'm just going to wet it, whatever is in my brush. And then I'm going to put like nice thick wet in the wet. A little bit of this dark color I have here. I can put some shading, like some, um, you know, I mean, the dark in fall, they're really, really dark browns. I mean, really dark purpley browns. So make it nice and dark. And I did, there's no branch over here, but I put one in there anyways. So I just felt like they needed a branch going this way. I use my smaller brush because I'm doing more detail. Brown in here. Let that fill in there. And since, um, I'm not going to give him the same coat as the pants. Because that just looks so dark and like, eh, he doesn't know how to dress right. This fisherman doesn't know how to dress right. <laughs> so I'm going to give him, um, I'm going to give him khaki. No, let's give him a khaki top and a more um, dark pants, brown pants. I'm sure that's <laughs> the fishing ensemble. That's the best. I'm not sure. But here, I'm going to make this nice and dark. I do want the contrast between the tree and the fisherman to be the same. Excuse me. Well, let's try another of this 9.5 beer. The half ass 93X. Mm -hmm. mm, that's that's pretty good. 9.5. Uh, I can I can deal with that. Here's a little branch going down. A little black in that, a little bit of dark blue. A little bit of crack on gold for a little bit of green. A 
just um, gave myself some new brushes. Um, I've been using these brushes. They've been so worn out. For, and so I thought tonight I'm going to give myself a new set of brushes. So these are brand new brushes I put out there. So once in a while I treat myself. But now I got to pay myself um, <laughs> for my brushes. Look at the fine line you can get on these things. Last time. Let's see. Seven ten. Oh my god! I got twenty minutes. Let's talk. <laughs> got twenty minutes left, so we're gonna get it all done by that time. So when I did the quick paint this year um, at the at the plein air fest, I did a old truck. Um, if you look online, you'll see what I had painted uh, for the quick paint, which you get ninety minutes of paint. And actually, I got done fifty minutes early, so I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I just didn't paint after I had time and I would walk back. And, um, but us watercolors have a little bit of an advantage when it comes to painting faster than oil painters, because we can do a big wash like that and it's done where it's a little bit harder for them to do that. And so um, I got it done and I won a poem award for that one for the truck, but I really liked what I did on that one. A lot of times, even myself, if, uh, if I see, I do something nice, I really, that one, I'm probably going to keep that painting because it's kind of a neat painting. Old truck, old rusty truck. Let's do his hat orange. Let's give him an orange hat. As you notice, I'm wearing a Dillman's hat. Look at that. See? Dillman's, Dillman's Resort hat. So when you're up here next, come and get one of those. Well, kind of a brown hat here. We'll just get him in there. Front of the hat. Now let's put a swatch of orange right here because it's like so bright it's hitting the front of the hat. He's got he's got some hair. Unlike myself, he's got some hair. I'm gonna put this on here. And then I'm gonna give him a burgundy top, I think. Give him a lizarin. Like an alizarin, still dark, but more of maybe a alizarin type of jacket. Oh, that's his elbow right here. Oh, shoot. And then he's got a little pouch in the back. He's not fly fishing, but I gave him a fly fishing vest. <laughs> and this is all wet, so I better stop here for a second. Go over here, get the rest of our branches in. Any questions? That's it. Fun fall colors. It's it's so nice seeing these colors right now. They're just amazing. We'll be putting some opaque lights in there because I find it to be really neat if you put a really light white and yellow in on top as opaque. I really like that look. It's um, I know it's not traditional, but I think it gives it a really neat look to put leaves on top that are opaque. You can negative paint around like I'm doing, but um, actually painting them in sometimes, it actually looks kind of cool. I'm getting, and, and the branches, you can't have enough branches really. You can go crazy with branches. And I didn't follow this branches exactly because there's some of these branches were kind of tangent to each other and they were exiting at one spot. So I kind of made some of the branches up and I made them up myself so that they're not, those, some go down, some go up, some twist back and forth. You want to do that because they come forward towards you. And they break up because they're going to be some leaves in front of um, some of the branches. And what color are the branches? All kinds of colors. I use purple. I use um, black with green, black with red. And I try to make them really fine. And now here, this is wet, so I'm going to try to make them really thin, but they're going to wash out probably. But so I'm finding little spots where it's dry. Just 
there's nothing worse than if you spend all this time on your painting and then you just do one of these things where you you go really quickly with like you take your brush and go like that to get branches that's not branches that's like i'm not sure what that is that's not painting a branch by just going back and forth like this maybe weeping willows or something but no just spend some time they have anatomy to them to them too I used to, that used to be my big pet peeve when I was a teacher and then people would do that. They're just like really quickly, just put them in there, like just wispy. No, they're, they have a way of um, going thinner and thinner and overlapping and because these show really well because they're dark against light. And so if I did that, you would see that as a big, big, huge mess that would not work well. So I'm going to take a little bit of pink and orange, which makes the salmon -y color. I really love that color to make pink and orange. And then I put that inside the tree here a little bit, give it some, give it some grain. And bark, not green. <laughs> bark, bark of the wood. Don't bark, but just grain. So you can make some of the branches lighter too, like make some of the branches like in there, they're in the back, the background. Like I said, you could never have enough branches. You can put, there's a million branches on a tree. So basically just do a lot of branches, but not this, not that. How's this thing looking? Is it out of focus? What the heck's going on here? I get that focus. That's how come I used to like wearing black gloves and I don't have any, but that's makes it come back. Yeah, the branches are forming an X right there. I noticed that. But that's not too bad if I put a couple of leaves on top of that when it dries. And I put a couple of leaves right here. And so I'll kind of make that go away. Put some little darker leaves. We don't have that. Some a little bit darker. And you can put it in front of the leaves too, in front of the, the branches. Now John Pike had a really neat way of working um, hard edges. So like this would be a hard edge and then he would have the light coming in from behind and then he'd put, he'd like rim light the leaves. And so what you do is you take this and just make your leaves in front and rim light it with the dark from the background. See, they, this is actually the dark from the background is giving me the shape of the leaves. So I can just take that and rim light these brand, these leaves in here. And that makes it a really cool looking um, rim lighting on the leaves. And just I'm softening some of this so it doesn't be so hard edged. All right, let's finish this guy's coat. Otherwise, he's going to be undressed here. Let's just finish this guy's coat. I stopped a little bit because there's no, it was wet, and so I couldn't get the hard edges. I throw a little bit of orange on this side. Now I just made it really, really wet. Then I'll take some of that alizarin crimson color, crimson lake. Put that in there. Darks in there to get, eliminate that X a little bit, some really dark leaves. I want to have like ADA because I keep on going away from this guy's jacket <laughs> and finding other leaves to put in there. See that? Look at that. It's like I have no, I must have some kind of ADA. <laughs> I can't keep focused. <laughs> Is that what they call it? ADA? Attention deficit order or AD. <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's go back to him. Let's get this darn jacket on him already. My gosh. His elbow. So. You can kind of know where the folds go. It goes around and under. Right here, there'd be a little bit darker part because it's going underneath in there a little bit. And then there's usually like a 
comes down off his shoulder here, kind of goes round. I kind of eliminated the little pack in his back here, so let's take that out a little bit. Right here, there's his hand. And it is dark pretty much, like in the picture, if you look, it's just all dark. But I don't want to make it just black. I want to give it a little bit of shape and a little bit of a little bit of color. And I'm not doing a portrait of this guy, so I don't need to like make it so detailed that you I mean you know he's a fisherman, right? He's gonna have his rod in his hand, and so you kind of know what he's doing. You don't have to um you know, the story is told, you don't have to make it so perfect that you know exactly like it's a photograph. It's a, we know that this guy is fishing and there's a lake right there, a river, you know, so we know. You don't have to explain everything about your painting. It's a little wet, so let me just take it over here and dry it a second. Hold on, let me just see. Do his hand a little bit darker. And these branches and stuff around them, you do a few of them and you make the lighting like it's underneath the branches and maybe a few weeds here. Again, this is a center of interest, so this you can do this right in this area. Now I'd have to look at it in my screen here because then I can tell my big lights and darks, like what is what is working and what, what's not working. And so far it looks okay. I think we got maybe a little bit darker. See, I need to just go dark and this to be dark and come back this way. So that looks okay. This probably needs to be darker, but it's still wet. And I went a hard edge, so I gotta wait for that a little bit. So let's make this side over here a little bit darker. And how much time do we have left? 22, so not too bad. We'll finish it. We we'll always finish in an hour. Pamela asks, when you use gouache, do you mix the paint with water? Um, when I use gouache, um, yes, I do. I, it's just like using watercolor. If you want to wash, like um, wet in the wet wash, then you use water. You can use it thick without water. I mean, you can just use it like I just use some of the watercolor, really thick. And then like, I, um, this is not gouache, this is a watercolor, but I could use it like gouache. So let's say I wanted to do that. Remember I said I was going to do some leaves that are going to be light on top of dark. So I would just take like my white, maybe a little bit of orange and make like an orangey, um, opaque. This is like an orange opaque now. And right, I can just put this right on top of there. I didn't wet it. I didn't put my brush into the water. And then I can just put it right in there. I can just basically make it thick. See, I'm just, I'm pulling it really, really thick and I can just paste it down like a leaf. See that one right there? Can you see that? It's just, I can go over the dark part. Now that my tree is still wet, so it's just going to blend in there, but over here it's a little bit dry, but I can actually put in there. See the leaves right there? And that's okay. That's gouache. And that's, you can do that with gouache and watercolor. Watercolor is basically our gouache is basically opaque watercolor. And so I'm making my watercolor opaque, though you shouldn't make it so thick that it's like oil because it doesn't have the right materials in it to do that. But you definitely can make it thick like this I'm doing right now. I'm not using gouache, I'm using colors with white in it, which makes it opaque. And I can still wax these too. I could wax this with the cold wax to, so I don't have to use glass and a mat. I can just frame it like a, like an oil painting. For those of you who don't know about that, look up one of my videos on cold wax and waxing your watercolors. I'm using, not using um, a, a glass or mat board. You just frame it on it with a frame. So let's get our fishing pole in there and then we're getting pretty close here. We got six minutes left. Six minutes and we'll be done. So here's the reel. Here's the fishing pole. And I'm not going to make it so, so dark that it, it stands out so far. I just wanted to. 
you're not going to see where the line goes. It doesn't matter where the line goes. That's um, a lot of times that if the light's hitting it, it would shine and you can do it like a little thing. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it at that because it's enough to uh, bring this stuff back here a little bit. Bring this over here back again. Because I do want to have this a little bit more. Um, this These reflections a little bit darker and a little bit more precise for that these trees right here. I can do them hard edged because now it's dry. It shows waves. It shows waves in the in the water. Water is fun to do. I mean, it's so the reflections are fun to do. You know, it just kind of sits there and some light waves here. A little bit where the hook is, where the um, little grommets are for the fishing pole. Do I mix my gouache on the palette with watercolor? Yes. Um, not the acrylic one, just the watercolor gouache. The watercolor gouache, I, I actually have that little one. I don't have it with me right at the moment. I just put it right there and I just dip into that. And you mix them together, no problem whatsoever. Mix them together. And I use them thick, I use them thin. I do washes wet in the wet. And so, yes, I mix them all kinds of ways. And I use them totally, totally together, totally together. That's what we did all week. Um, we all uh, mixed together. And we had some really nice paintings come out. Really, really amazing paintings. Now let's do a little bit more gouache kind of look. I'm gonna make it thick again and do this in, in the dark areas here so that they just pops. You know, these pop out all over the place. And I'm gonna stand up and see it from a distance. I'm gonna put a few more dark leaves in. He needs to be a little bit darker on his on the dark side of his jacket. His collar maybe a little bit. Here's a little bit of a pocket back there, a little fish carrier. That's for fly fishermen, but we can put him on him too. He's not fly fishing, he would be in the water. Though I'm yeah, because he gets stuck in the trees. <laughs> You don't want that. We don't want to have him get his hook stuck in the trees. All right. Don't forget the uh, hit the like button. Oh, thanks, Tina. Thanks for having everybody hit the like button. Why is this going out of focus? There we go. I think it's in focus. Is it in focus, guys? <laughs> Seems a little out of focus. Also, I don't know if you know, but I remember repeating this a couple of times is that when you're watching me on, 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 your, on your set or on your computer, there's a little button on the side and you can, um, it's auto, the auto um, clarity quality. You hit the, hit the highest quality. So instead of watching it in whatever they want you to watch it in, hit high quality and get a nice and HD actually. Yeah. But, for some, but for some reason, it's not... That's how come I usually wear black gloves because it, it see how it comes in and out of focus. But hopefully that wasn't working. Okay, but I think I'm done, guys. You see anything else? Let me know. Oh, that's a that's a leaf right here. That's a leaf, and so I'm wipe that out. Can you wax it even if it's not already attached to a board? Um. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I would. I would definitely try to attach it to the board first before you wax it. That makes it easier, and then you to when you put it on a board. That's because that that way you just put it right into a frame. So if you um, put it on the board first and then wax it, but either way it's fine. It's gonna it's still gonna be fine if you wax it before the board. It's not gonna do anything to it that's gonna hurt it. But I think it's easier if you wax or um, put it down first onto a board because you're gonna have to cut it to a, a, a standard size. And sometimes when you're you actually kind of want to do the um, pacing of the board 
before you even paint it because that way you have the right dimensions and because if you do it afterwards you may not have the right dimensions for a standard size frame so i find that you know take a couple of sheets of paper and mount them on board first and i think that's it guys unless you see something else if the camera is focusing on the white spot shift the painting over a bit to get the center on a color mm. Asked, would there be leaf reflections in the water? Um, there would actually be leaves in the water. That's what we should do. <laughs> put some leaves in the water, like put little dots like this of leaves. But yes, they would be. And actually, there would be leaves. Like you're not seeing this is, we'd have to stand back a little bit to get that. I would, I do want to, how much time do we have? Oh, we're one minute past, but we're just going to do this. Let me just put a little bit of waves into the into this area here so that um, this is a little bit darker down here. Put a little bit more waves into the water. And you can also, like I said, you can put leaves floating around in the water too. All right, that's it guys. I didn't have to take the tape off this time, but there you go. There you have it. Gorgeous. But thanks again, guys, for coming by, dropping by. And uh, if, you, if you are going to do this painting, please put it on my um, YouTube, not YouTube, my Facebook, um, my Facebook group page, and we can critique it and see it. And and one more thing, I don't like. I need one more branch right here. I just saw a branch I need to put in. It needs to go down here and here. All right, we'll see you next week. Next week, I will um, I will be back home. And actually, no, I actually, actually, I'm probably going to be on the road again. I'm going to Springfield, Illinois to do a, um, a workshop in Springfield, Illinois. So I will be there on a Wednesday, or I have to drive out on a Wednesday. So I will be there. So I'll probably be out of a hotel room.